Hi, this is Christoph, and in this episode on Nginx, we're going to take a look at serving dynamic PHP sites. So in our previous episode, we had a configuration at Etsy Nginx sites available test.com. And I forgot to add Vim, so I can't open it. But I've changed it from since the last episode because the same configuration is not going to work for static sites and dynamic sites. I'm going to put this code below the video on GitHub so you can just copy and paste it. You don't have to worry about spelling mistakes. But let's walk through this and let's explain how this works. This is a really basic configuration. It'll just take a minute. So the first directive block that we have up here is called upstream backend. Now, in this up, in this upstream backend, we're going to tell it Nginx that our we're, we want to use a Unix socket to pass our PHP requests to PHP FPM so that it can process it, return it back to Nginx, and then we can re return that to the user. We can't use Nginx to process PHP applications directly. It can't do that. We have to use something called PHP FPM. Now we don't have to separate this in this upstream backend. We could put it directly in the server directive and inside of a location directive, but this makes it simpler when you have multiple different backend uh, services or you want to pass the request to multiple different ones. For example, in this case, I just have one, but I could also have multiple ones. So I could have another one here called uh, backend1.example.com, and this would actually be a different server. And then we could have Nginx load balancing between these two. So pass one request to the first server, another request to the second server, and keep doing that over and over again so that we have even distribution. And there are all kinds of different um, different settings that we can apply to this. For example, we could, for the first server, we could have a weight of three. So for every one request to this second server, backend server, we want to have three requests go to this Unix PHP FPM socket. So as you see, we can... Um, we can distribute the load differently. There are different algorithms that allow us to do this. We could even have a max fails equals two and fail timeout equals 30 seconds. So if you have two failed attempts, right, you're passing the request to back in one, but you get a failed request, you get two of those in 30 seconds, then Nginx is not going to pass any more requests to that backend server for 30 seconds. So our felt timeout is the, the duration time and also the window of opportunity for these max fail time or max fail uh, numbers of, of tries. We could also have a back or a um, I'm sorry a backup one. So we do server backup one dot example dot com and name it backup. The only way that this one's going to get used is if the other two are not being responsive. So if the other two fail with our max fails and fail timeouts then Nginx is going to use this backup one here. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but um, I just find this really interesting and I wanted to cover it. But let's move on. You don't really have to have these right now. We can just stick to the, the, the first one I had. You don't even need to have a weight on that one. Uh, I'm not going to take it off, but you don't need to have it. Everything else in this server directive is pretty similar. We added one location block and I changed our index to index.php instead of index.html so that it knows to look for a PHP file. I'm keeping this location directive here uh, because not everything is, is PHP. We want to process static files as well and we don't need to pass those to PHP FM. That's a waste of resources. This is where the interesting stuff happens. We're going to do a regex or regex, however you call it, a check on the URI file and if it matches PHP extension, then we're going to use this location directive. Inside of this location directive, we've got some interesting things going on. Don't be intimidated by all the different colors. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So this first simple directive that we have in here called fast CGI split path info, this basically defines a regular expression to separate our script file name and the path info so that we can use it later on. Okay, so it's going to take the script file name and the path info. Next, we have a try files URI or equals 404. As a default, you give it 404 error if you can't find a file that, that matches this URI. The reason we have this in here is really for security reasons. Just know that you have to either add this 
or you could even have something like uh, you could go in, in your php.ini and change this setting. I uh, think this, yeah, this one right here in php.ini. Again, this is just for security and or security purposes. There are a few other things you could do, but frankly, these are the easiest two that I've found. Moving on, fast CGI pass backend. This is what we are pu pushing upstream and named it upstream backend. We could name it upstream end back whatever. We just have to change the uh, the name here as well to to reflect those changes. That just tells it what so what server to send it to. Next, we have our fast CGI index that just says, you know, look for index.php. If there's no, uh, like if there's a URI with a slash and no file.php or test or profile.php, then we just want to default to looking for an index.php. And this just includes fast CGI parameters, which are configured in your root nginx directory. Yeah, you can take a look at that if, if you're interested. All right, so this configuration file, I'm actually not going to save it because I don't want those. I want the default one that I had earlier. And like I said, I'll put the, the code in the description below. So I'm just going to exit here. So now we have Nginx ready to go, but we don't have PHP FPM. We need to install that now. Just do a simple sudo apt-get update just to update our cache. And then after that, we're going to install PHP 5 FPM and configure that and we'll be ready to go. It's a very quick process. Let's wait for that to finish. As soon as it's installed, we're going to check to see if it's running properly. PS AUX grep. We're searching for PHP FPM. As you see, it's working. We have a master process and we have two pools. Okay, now it's time to uh, to configure our PHP FPM. We need to go in. Um, let's see, where is it? Here, let's just do test.conf. This is really simple config. We name our configuration, I'm naming it app, and then listen on var run php5 fpm, which is what I'm pointing to in our nginx config. The user is www.data, which is the same user and group that we are using for nginx. If you don't use the same ones, you may run into permission errors since we are using sockets which is good because you get more control over permissions that are running your applications and scripts. But it can be a pain when setting up if you're not entirely sure what you're doing. All right, and then we're I'm adding a few other things in here that I'm not going to explain in this episode, but I do have a uh, tutorial on my blog that explains what these are and what different settings you could use because these may not be the best ones for your application. I'll put a link below the video so you can go to that if you're interested. Okay, I think I've got everything right. Let's save this. Okay, so now what I need to do is restart these services. Or actually, no, we need to have a PHP file first. I'm getting ahead of myself again. So let's do that now. Let's go in super, it's user share, I think it is. Let me check. Uh, user share, yeah, user share nginx test.com. And as you see, actually, you don't see because I keep forgetting to put vim. But now if I do this, you see we have an index.html. Let's do an index.php. Save that. Okay. Now we should be good to go. Let's restart Nginx. And let's restart PHP 5 FPM. Now let's do a curl localhost and we run into a bad gateway. So it looks like I screwed something up, which is kind of good because I want to show you how to debug it when that's the case. We have logs in var log nginx. Let's do error. Uh, I keep, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I keep forgetting my dang M, uh, vim. All right, so we have error.log. We see connect to unix failed no such file or directory while connecting to upstream client, uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. No such file or directory. Let's get out of here and let's verify. Oops. And you see var run 
and you look at it and it's true we don't have any PHP 5 FPM why is that the case well let's check the uh, the logs for PHP FPM and actually I already know what what's wrong I forgot to take the default configuration off whoops which means that it's conflicting on the socket at least I think that's what it is let's go at the end of the file fill to pull app enable yep yep the problem that I have and that that step that I forgot to show you is after I created that that uh, new pool in the PHP FPM called test.conf I did not delete the default PHP FPM configuration file which is also listening on the same socket so we have a conflict what we need to do is remove it or just move it as a backup and I'm gonna do that by uh, moving FPM pool and see we have one called www.conf I want to rename it to uh, www.backup I just like to restart every time just to make sure and this time another problem so again let's see what's wrong with this let's see if I forgot something I may not have even forgotten anything test is successful uh, let's see what time was this yeah so it looks like the test was successful let me test it again just to make sure um, fail to open log 5 fpm test so the test is successful we don't have any issues with that let's restart it one more time and if that doesn't work I think it's a bug that I've run into before. That's good. We get to run into all these issues. Okay. Actually, it may be working now. Well, let's test. Yeah, see, it works now. So there's there's a really weird thing with PHP FPM and Ubuntu where sometimes the processes get hung up. So our pools don't go away. We have to manually kill them. I really don't understand why or what the problem is with that. It's, um, but it, but it's definitely there and you need to be aware of it. And that's why sometimes when you go through these guides, they don't cover that. And so you run into an error, you get frustrated and you quit. Uh, in this case, I worked through it and I figured it out. And that's really what I want you to do as well. When these kinds of, of things happen, check the logs, look at the logs, look, look at what's going on. And if there's an issue, you know, just go to Google, type it in, and uh, try to figure out what's going on with it. So this episode was a little bit of a, of a unique episode just because I did not script these errors. I didn't really do it on purpose. They just kind of popped out, and you got to see the, the debugging process of it. But if it kind of confused you, let me just run through the steps one more time. Go to your Nginx file, which is, in this case, I named it test.com. Inside of that, copy and paste my my configuration file that I'm going to put below the description and listen, go back to the, to the beginning of the video and listen to my description of each setting so you understand what it does. Don't just copy and paste and hope that it works. Understand what's going on. Own your stack. Own what's going on. Understand every process of it. Then after you put that configuration in, we need to install PHP 5 FPM. Once you have that installed, create a new configuration file. I named mine test.conf copy and paste what I put in there. It's pretty self-explanatory except maybe for the PM, PM max children and max requests. Go to my blog post, do a control F, search for PM space equals space on demand. You'll see all the explanations there. The link is below the description. Save that file, then remove or move the default configuration file that came with PHP 5 because otherwise you'll run into a socket error. Either that or rename the socket in the new configuration file and then go back in Nginx and point it to that new socket. In any case, you can't have two different applications in PHP FPM with the same sockets. After you do that, restart every service. It should work. If it doesn't work, go to your var log error.log or Nginx error.log. You can find that in the configuration file for the respective services and just do some debugging. Google it if you can't figure it out. Try to do it yourself first. It can be interesting, but I know it can also be frustrating. So don't spend too much time on it. If you still can't figure it out, you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. 
uh, leave a comment below the video or send me an email, scalarcode.com contact, and uh, I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.